Hey guys, Oscar here. Do you guys remember that small game called No Man's Sky, which was announced um, at E3, I think, by that small, tiny development company, Hello Games, that made the Joe Danger games? If so, there's been this massive post which shows a lot of the details of the games and basically explains what the game is about and what you can do. Um, and I'm going to list a few of the facts, or the news, you could call it, um, that I have found out by reading this, which I think is good enough to make a video, because I really can't wait for this game, and if you don't know what this game is, then uh, click on the video here, that shows up on the screen, um, where Cam talks about his most anticipated games, um, and he also talks a bit about No Man's Sky, and then you'll be able to understand what it ba what it basically is. Um, some people might call it like Minecraft, uh, but like in space and stuff like that. But I really don't think it's like Minecraft at all whatsoever. If you're one of those people that think like that, I think that you've totally got the game in. You've you thought of the game in completely the wrong way. But anyway, here are some of the facts. Almost everything is procedural. So, ships, plants, animals, planets, you know, whatever, nearly everything is procedurally generated. So, everything is going to be new and different every single time. There's no saved games. The game will save all the time as you go along, but you can't save and load games. If you die, then you'll have to rebuild from where you are in the universe. You'll never have to go back to, to the start again. Uses it, the game uses an alternative pre, um, periodic table to help create environmental diversity. So it's not actually like the it, it it's a bit it's it's not the periodic table that you'll know. There'll be um, it'll be a bit different. There'll be different um, elements and stuff like that on there. So it's not going to be it's not going to be like all scientific and stuff like that. It is it is quite. A cartoony science fiction game so it's not all gonna be correct um, there will be a narrative um, and it also give you a reason to why the player is there the presence of the player and their activities they're not just gonna say like oh you're the only one that can help us and stuff like that and then there's loads of other players even though they said that you won't be able to see a lot of the players because you're gonna be so far apart they'll still be a reasoning behind the presence and uh, the player's activities uh, and details on various races that precedes you. You won't be told the narrative, it's kind of up to you to explore and piece it all together and come up with your own interpretations. But yeah, so there is a narrative, but you kind of have to like look for artifacts and stuff like that to kind of piece it all together. Um, you can be um, affiliated with different factions. But it won't indicate this in any way. It's simply, you know, if you destroy one of their colonies, then they're going to come after you. And if you don't, and, you know, you're kind of nice to them, then they'll help you out. And you can use some, you can use a D-pad to bring in wingmen uh, to help you fight a battle or something like that. Which is really, really cool. So, if you see this faction, you should probably treat it with respect. Because otherwise they'll come after you and try and kill you. They haven't actually announced a release date yet. They said coming soonish at E3. And we have no idea what that means. So, I'm hoping it's early 2015 or mid 2015. But we don't know. It could be early 2016 or even late 2016. This game is massively anticipated and it's a big big deal so if it does end up releasing in a couple of years and not this year then I wouldn't be surprised there won't be any quests or missions to go on it'll be up to you to decide what you want to do basically they're trying to get us to have um, this natural curiosity so and the richness of the worlds presented will be enough to kind of keep you interested because um, this is a game about exploration, they always touch upon that subject that this is a game about exploration. It's not going to be um, a game where you've got missions to do this, do that. It, it's a game where you make your own choices in this own civilization, and it other people's 
um, actions, can reflect, and it, it, it's basically this big, big, big immersive world. Um, but it's basically up to you how you want to play. The universe is a living, breathing place that just works. You've got shipping lanes, trade routes, uh, space stations, and planets have ecologies. There'll be a compelling reason to head towards the centre of the galaxies, because that's kind of the main goal of the game. Well, there's also going to be an ending, with a, which will kind of provide a sense of closure. But obviously there'll be a reason to continue playing after that ending, and once I finish the game, I'm probably going to still be playing it, because the game sounds really, really fun. Um, it, this 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 next fact is um it didn't used to be this it used to be everyone starts on their own planet that was the the goal everybody starts on their own planet and the planets are actually life sized people like they are the size of Earth well some of them are they, there's different sized planets but some of them are the size of Earth can you believe that that's massive but it's basically up to you how you play and stuff like that and but yeah so everyone starts on their own solar system now that's even bigger you everyone starts on their solar system not just planet solar system so basically people will be very far away from one another so if you're planning to play this game with a friend and you think that you're just going to meet up and explore the universe together that's very unlikely to happen since you're going to be so far apart but um sean murray did say that um, they're going to try and implement kind of a multiplayer mode, which, is, which brings back to the core multiplayer that people enjoy nowadays. So there will be a multiplayer, but they're going to add that in later. But when you first start up the game, it's going to kind of feel like a single player experience. Only significant events are shared between people. So let's say um, you killed an animal. But it's not, nobody's going to notice that. It'll be dead for you, but nobody will really notice that. But you can actually wipe out entire species in this game. And then if you did that, everyone wouldn't see that species and it'll come up as extinct on the encyclopedia and stuff like that because you've killed it off. Which is bit, that's, that's huge. You know, if you kill off a whole species, you'll never see it in the game ever again. Which is c crazy. I, like... I mean, I, I don't expect any, every, they're going to kill off every single species in the game. <laughs> but the game has been also made up of multiple galaxies. Like, galaxies, multiple of them. That's, that's like, so the system, it, 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 it seems infinite for me. It seems like it's this is going to be a massive game. Um, you start with a life pod ship. Without any pipe drives, you can't just warp to planets and stuff like that. Um... So you'll have to get the money to buy a better ship before you can really begin exploring the universe. So you would mine for materials and sell that to space stations, etc. And then you'd be able to um, afford more stuff. Like you could buy ships at space stations. And there's three classes of ships. There's fighter, trader and explorer. And they'll, it won't say that one's fighter, one's trader, one's explorer. And then you select it. It's... It won't tell you that, it'll just tell you like the ship's name and you can infer from what it looks like that it's going to be a fighter and a trader. So fighter will have bigger guns and it'll be a bit slower. Trader will be very slow but can hold a lot of space um, for minerals and stuff like that. And an explorer is going to be more, it, it, it's going to be, it can get damaged quite easily um, and it, it, it can't attack people as well but that's going to go soup that's going to go a lot faster than all the other ships so you can quickly get out of trouble if you are being chased uh, or you're having a dog fight with someone so that you'll be able to get out pretty fast um so it's kind of for more of the passive players um the cockpit of your ship will be a life pod so if the ship is destroyed then you'll go back to the life pod and you've lost that ship so you kind of have to be careful with your ship and try not to get shot down because you can actually lose your ship in this game. There's no insurance. There's no you keep your ship forever. It, it if you if it if you crash it or if it destroys, then it, it it's gone forever. Um, you also have an equivalent to a whistle to call your ship over, as long as it's like in a certain distance. So it, it's kind of like I'm trying to 
find it again. Like in Red Dead Redemption, you can call your horse and it'll come over to you and you can get it on. Or in GTA, you can call the mechanic to get your car and stuff like that. So it's kind of, um, you'd say like spawning in props and stuff like that. It's kind of just calling your ship in. Uh, which is cool, so that means you won't have to run back to it. If you've been exploring the planet all day, you won't have to run back to your ship. You can just get it to come towards you, which is really cool. Um, after a while, though, your ship will wear and tear, um, and it'll be clearly visible. But it kind of helps you to form an emotional attachment to your beaten up ships. Um, so that's also why you want to keep your ships. You don't want to just crash them or get into fights with them and stuff like that. You know, you want to keep your ship for ever because every ship is different every ship is randomly generated so your ship will be unique it won't be exactly the same as everyone else's like it is in death scenes but that will be unique to you um but as well fuel will be quite expensive in the game they said that fuel is going to be quite expensive you can buy it space stations and stuff like that um and it's used to travel from one solar system to the next like a hyper jump um so fuel is going to be very expensive and um, as well, if you land on the planet, uh, apparently you can get out a jetpack, and with the jetpack, so you can explore the planet and use a jetpack to get around a bit quicker or get high up a mountain and stuff like that. Um, but they did say this will need to be earned, so I'm guessing you have to do something to get the jetpack. I I'm not sure. Um, they also said you have a mini map, so uh, jetpack and mini map are like going to be the best combo for exploring. Um, which will show points of interest, such as resources, rich areas, um, landmarks that you or other players have uploaded. Um, but you won't know until you actually get there. Um, this one I was a bit um, sketchy about. It, apparently you can name the things that you discover first, such as plants, planets, creatures, etc. Um, which I don't think is... I think it, it, it's a cool idea, but knowing people... They're, you know, the first thing, that first plant they'll see, they're going to call it dickweed or something like that. They're going to call it something stupid. Um, but they did say they'll have um, the Latin names by default, which will appear larger than the player names. So there'll be the Latin name on top, that'll be big, and then tiny underneath there'll be the name that the person's put on. But I'm sure if somebody puts, like, dickweed, then it'll be changed to something weed, or it'll blur it out, or it'll change the word to something different. Um, because otherwise I think it, it's going to kind of ruin the experience. Um, suits and weapons can only be upgraded at trading posts on planets. Uh, that's just a fact to say up there, there's not a lot to talk about on that one. But yeah, so suits and weapons can be upgraded at trading posts on planets. Upgrades include allowing you to breathe underwater for longer or surviving in toxic environments, etc. So some planets you won't actually be able to go to because you won't be able to breathe in the toxic air and stuff like that. So you'll need to upgrade your armor for that. Or if you go to a planet that's underwater and it's got like cities underwater and the whole civilization underwater, then you'll need obviously an upgrade where you can breathe underwater for longer or, you know, something like that. And you can also blow holes in things. Now, I know you're like, wait, what? You know, why? Why would you do that and stuff? But basically, it, 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 it'd be cool if you could blow a hole and stuff, because you could blow a hole in the ground and hide there, or, and have kind of like a base or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. And they also talked about features that they're going to add into the game. So as I talked before about multiplayer and stuff like that, they're going to add multiplayer in the game. They're also going to add a um, more diverse kind of t terrain control kind of stuff so you could actually dig holes on planets and dig a like underground cave if you wanted to and stuff like that. that's basically what it means but it's not going to come out at launch it's going to come out later um the same with the multiplayer and they also said that the other thing they said they're going to add after the game's launch is kind of like a um ground vehicles so you'll be able to land on the planet call in a ground vehicle i guess and then you'd be able to drive along the surface of the planet discovering stuff which I've wanted since the beginning since the game was announced I was like oh god I hope they've got like dune buggies or something because I don't just want to fly around the space and land on the planet and have to walk around everywhere I want to have a dune buggy or something um, so they, they are adding a ground vehicle into the game which is just great news 
Um, and that's about it. That's all the news. Um, I've left a link in the description if you guys want to see the full post or article, or whatever, at, which will have all the facts on it. Cause I haven't read all of them out because there's loads. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of news update episode on No Man's Sky. It's one of the. It's going to be my most anticipated game, or one of them. A little bit Planet and No Man's Sky are my most anticipated games at the moment. And yeah, that's about it really. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys leave a like or leave a comment or even subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. If you're not a chum already, then subscribe to become a chum. And you'll get news updates and, and you'll get all the updates and videos that we re release. And you know, you'll get all of that stuff. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Okay.